Hello everyone and welcome to this video about full the obfuscation of ConfusX2. ConfusX2 is uh, an open source freely available obfuscator for .NET uh, and today I'll be using free tools. Uh, they are free but I will be using one to three free tools uh, and the link uh, to download these tools will be included below this video. It will be a link to my github repository uh, that uh, contains the one of these two mainly are uh, the string decryptor uh, you will be provided with the ar this archive that contains all tools i'll be using here in this video so let's uh, jump to it firstly we can unpack the archive okay yes and here you can see uh three tools first uh, first one is a fork of depot dot it's not the original version it's a little bit different one it works for confuser x not confuser x2 i will explain it now uh the confuser x2 is uh some something like revival of confuser x and confuser x uh came from uh confuser family which uh basically originated from the confuser uh confuser is already dead uh the default dot version the, the fork one is uh, this one and it's called default.cex and it should work and it actually works a uh, great for confuser x yeah so it works nicely for the confuser x which is this one it's a uh, quite an old one uh and this uh has a fork uh which is named as uh, confuser x2 and the confuser x2 is here and if you would check the all the change log you would find out that there are not many changes to control control for obfuscation there are actually almost none of changes to control for obfuscation and this is the reason why we can still use the fork version like not fork version the the uh, modified version default.cx that originally was created for the confuser x but we will be using it on confuser x2 nice so uh that's probably all what i wanted to cover here and we'll be using of course this one version of the uh, obfuscation here so let's jump to it uh for some example program i chose to use the safety cuts i think it's called safety cuts uh, so firstly we can try to run it uh yeah it runs and if we check it in the nspyx uh we can see that there are a bunch of strings that are will be encrypted by the confuser x obfuscator and a lot of code that will be also obfuscated by, by the control flow and other stuffs. Nice. So this is actually how it uh, looks originally. It's 64-bit program. Uh, it will be uh, very important uh, later on. Uh, and yeah, so let's uh, obfuscate it. Uh, we can jump to the confuser x graphic user interface it's super easy to use you can just drag and drop go to settings uh here and plus and here we can change the preset uh we can choose the preset and maximum protection done and go to protect and protect now it will be like fully protected. It will be also packed, so we need to unpack it uh, via the DN spikes. I'm doing this kind, all of these kind of things because this is the form you will be very likely dealing with. Uh, so let's check it how it looks like. Uh, so let's go to the confused folder. Here is the confused. Here is the obfuscated version of that. And yeah, you can immediately, of course, you can immediately see that it's uh, protected by the Confuser X uh, because of this attribute. But uh, this is something what is very often uh, removed uh, by some modified version of Confuser X. Uh, so, but it's very, very silly to recognize the Confuser X uh, to obfuscation. I will, I will show you how you can recognize it first of all here no because you can see it's uh, packed yeah some uh, method bodies is uh, uh, like uh, not destroyed but it's corrupted and things like that because it will be unpacked during the uh, runtime in memory so let's unpack it uh, confusex is uh, using the class constructor the module class module constructor to uh, unpack it uh, during the runtime so for that we can just break 
after the first uh, method will be executed and it should be already unpacked in memory so let's start to debug it and unpack it we passed through the execution of the first method we can just uh, like file close it and load it from the memory and here and you can see that those body method bodies are already uh, filled in nicely so we can save this kind of module from the memory so you can just go here file and save module and we can rename it as a dumped and remember md uh, module writer options uh, try to check uh, all possibilities or all, all options because this is very useful when you are dealing with obfuscated binaries try to preserve as much as possible best practice okay and it's saved stop debugging we can close this one and it should be somewhere here here is the dump one you can check it that we dump, uh, correctly dump it that uh, those method bodies are really unpacked and this is the unpacked binary still obfuscated we'll be working on so how you can recognize that it's confuse x2 and not confuse x of course this attribute is self-explanatory but you can check here try to find some uh, string decryption method you can see it here nicely uh, how I can recognize it so quickly is because uh, ConfuseX2 and ConfuseX basically family is using something what is called a generic method for string decryptions and you can see here is a call to generic method that will decrypt the uh, specific string uh, this is uh, also common from ConfuseX not just ConfuseX2 but how you can recognize that it's uh, ConfuseX2 because of this check this check was actually added to the ConfuseX2 and it uh, it checks for our method how we how we will be uh, obfuscating the string decryption uh, the best or the fastest and easiest way how to deobfuscate strings are via the reflection and you dynamically invoke those decryption functions but if you will do that uh, this check will get you yeah, because this check is uh, uh, controlling if the uh, assembly that called this method is the same assembly that contains this method and this is not true if we will be using our deobfuscator so yeah this check is quite a nice and uh, neat but uh, I will defeat it with my ConfuseX string uh, Confuse, Confuse 2 string decryptor via uh, .NET hooking so let's uh, close it or we can again check how it looks like to remember that nice let's close it and we can jump to uh, first tool the default dot fork so the default dot fork is here uh, let's uh, get the dump version here and just run the default dot on that default dot the input is cat dump and here is an argument p and crx it actually means that uh, we are specifying that we are trying to force it to invoke the deobfuscator confuser x yeah sometimes it's not recognized because those attributes of confuser x are removed so we know that we are dealing with ConfuseX2. We are trying to force the default dot to make it possible. And remember, this is a fork of default dot. This is not the original version. So this ConfuseX uh, deobfuscator module is not uh, available in uh, the original version of the default dot. Let's deobfuscate it. And here is the deobfuscated version. So let's check it. What's the difference? We should uh, get rid of the control for obfuscation and the naming and things like that, this kind of shitty obfuscation. And yeah, it, it looks much, much nicer, but we can still see those uh, uh, string are still encrypted. So we need another tool. Uh, you can see here is the string, which will be probably uh, some PE. And you can see here it's still obfuscated. Nice. So we need to get rid of the uh, 
string obfuscation. So we will jump to our second tool. And as I told you, remember it's a 64-bit binary. And this is important because uh, this string decryptor uh, is using reflection. So we need to use the same architecture as our targeted obfuscated assembly. So it's 64 bits. Just drag and drop through the 64 bit confusex to string decryptor. And that's done. Now, if you check the result, you will see that uh, all the strings are nicely decrypted. Even if you check this one, yes, it's some base64 encoded, probably PE binary. The mimic cuts, maybe, because it's safety cuts, as an example. Yeah. Uh, but the strings are very nice already. But what we could uh, also remove to uh, make it more like uh, look better and uh, polish this kind of things is the removing of the proxy methods. You can see, for example, here is some uh, invocation of S method 9, which just goes to console write line. So what we would like to do is just get this content and inline it from, into the point where it was invoked. Yeah, so this is like for the tool which is called proxy removal and this is our last tool actually what we will be using uh, so let's run it just again drag and drop remove jump codes and unpack and 77 uh, proxy codes were removed nice so here is the last version we have and that should be already cleaned as much as possible and if we check the result Oh no, here it's much better. No proxy methods, uh, all strings decrypted, no control for obfuscation, pretty nice. So we just get rid of the ConfuseX2 obfuscation and that's done. The last thing what we can actually do is try to run it. And if we try to run it, we should not occur any kind of problem. And yeah, that's run. That's it. That's actually all what I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy those tools. Uh, again, these tools will be available below this video as a link to my GitHub repository. You can download uh, the archive that contains all three tools for the Confuse X2 deobfuscation. Thank you for watching and see you next time.